What's up everybody? This is BP with Together We Grow here on our third installation on how to avoid the bandit sign police. Uh, we've already gone over the first two steps. The first video that we did on this part was the rules, just going over the general rules regarding bandit signs, regarding what they do, all those other things. Last video was uh, what to do before you actually place the sign. So different tips uh, that I can give you and different techniques that I can give you before you actually the signs were placed in the ground. And then the last thing that I will tell you is once your signs are being placed and after you've already placed your signs, how to avoid any confrontations. So basically we're gonna go over placing your signs and then we're also gonna go over what to do when you actually place these signs and people are calling you. People that are saying they're from the city, people that are saying they're from the neighborhood watch, uh, people claiming to be the mayor and whatever other fuck that things they wanna say. So um, I just wanna go, I'm gonna go over that information here. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about actually placing these signs. Um, I'm gonna have a specific video on placing them, so I'm gonna show you how to place the different signs. This is just more in regards to avoiding any type of confrontation. Um, first thing, something that I've already gone over all three videos, but I'll go over one more thing. Don't be confrontational when placing these signs. When you're out there placing signs, if, if somebody tells you, hey, don't put it in that property, don't put it in that property. Just go down the street, there's gonna be another property you can put it, there's gonna be another corner down there. If you happen to be in an area there and you're, and you're placing signs and a store owner comes up and says, hey, I'm, I've already told you guys not to place these signs, don't get mouthy with them, don't get smart with them, just say, you know what, I'm sorry. This is a complaint driven field. If people complain about you, the city will come and harass you. If people, if people don't complain about you, there's really not much they can do in that situation. Um, once your signs are placed, you're gonna start getting phone calls. Now, once you start getting phone calls, you're gonna get quite a few different phone calls. Obviously, you're gonna get people that are interested in your products. You're gonna get Lucy Lou's, Looky Lou's. Those are just people that are calling, just wanna know what this is all about. Um, they you know, just wanna ask questions. People that are wasting your time, basically. And then you're gonna get uh, the third people, which is the sign police. Now, the sign police doesn't really exist. There's no really such thing as a sign police. Well, a lot of times what happens is that you'll get a phone call from either somebody that works from the city You'll get a phone call to somebody that claims to work from the city. You'll get a phone call from a police officer, or you might get a phone call from just a random citizen, some guy that runs the neighborhood watch or something along those lines. Um, be very, 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 very careful when dealing with your clientele. Be very, very careful when you get an over-eager client. Now, you as a business professional know what your clients sound like. You as a business professional know what your clients what their tendencies are, what they tend to ask, what they tend to say. When I was back selling cell phones, we used to have this little game that we played. And we basically broke down everybody that came in into about three different categories. People were either gonna do this. People were gonna reach in their pocket and talk to their cell phone as they're telling you about their program. People will go get their cell phone, throw it on the counter and say, oh, this is a piece of crap, I need something else. Or people would sit there and talk about how your service was the best service and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we knew, and it got to a point where we can basically pinpoint the person when we saw them walking in to what type of client they were going to be. Now, the reason why I tell you that is because you know your clients when they call you. Be very, very, very careful with an over-eager client. Be very careful. Be very careful with people that call you right off the bat and want to buy 10 products and spend thousands of dollars right away without any question of who you are, without anything whatsoever. Be very careful with those. A lot of times, those people end up being city workers. A lot of times, they end up being people that work for the code enforcement. A lot of times, it's people that want to catch you with the hand in the cookie jar. Um, I had an incident, a good friend of mine who was out there doing real estate, he put a property that he was for sale. Some guy called him the next day and was very, very eager. I want to see the house right now. Can you meet me at the property right now? I just need to see the house right now, right now, right now. So my friend met him about an hour later. It was an undercover cop with the city uh, code enforcement guy sitting there. Now. They sat him down, lectured him for about half an hour and never find him, never did anything along those lines, actually didn't even took his information. They just sat there and bas basically lectured him, but they could have easily find him. They could have easily said, hey, we know who you are. You've already admitted to putting out the signs. Here's your ticket. Don't do this again. So be very, very careful when somebody calls and they're over eager about your stuff. Um, a lot of times, as I told and I said in the first video here, they can't find you they can't F-I-N-E, find you until they find you, F-I-N-D. So don't make it any easier for them. Don't go and just give out free information. Hey, when you answer your phone, hey, this is Brian with Together We Grow and we're located and so-and-so here and my number, don't, don't do that. 
feel your clients out, feel who they are, because every once in a while, like I said, you're going to get people calling you, assuming to be interested in your service, and they're really just trying to either get you caught up or, or harass you. A lot of times you'll get people that are just volunteers. They want to get your information so they can pass it on to the city so they can make sure they send you a letter. Uh, the second thing that I want to go over here is um, when people call you and complain about your signs, be very weary of what they say. Now, we've, we've already talked about being weary of overeager clients, but be very weary of what people say. The person on the other line could be anybody, anybody whatsoever. And honestly, the majority of the times when people call off these signs, they're not who they claim to be. You have no idea how many times I've personally talked to people calling and claiming to be the director of the city code enforcement, uh, the so-and-so here, the mayor of here, the this and that and they're just a regular Joe. They're just some guy trying to fluff feathers. They're just a dog trying to bark. They're just somebody trying to make them sense feel good. A lot of times you'll get people that call you and they're so pissed off of the fact that you have a sign on the ground. They're not really pissed off at your sign. They're pissed off at themselves for whatever reason. They probably have a fat wife. They probably have a crappy job or some shit like that that they're very upset about. So they're gonna take it out on your sign. They see your sign, they're gonna take it out on them. Don't feel that fire, all right? Don't, don't, don't sit there and don't start fighting with them. Don't start being, well, F you, I can do whatever you guys want. You don't know who I am anyway. Don't, don't do that. Just make, let them fluff their feathers. Let them bark. Let them feel like if they put you in their place. Say, you know what, sir? I'm sorry. You're right. You're right about that, sir. You are so right. You know what? I am so sorry. I'm not going to do that again. I told my worker, Pablo, not to put him in that neighborhood. I, I told him very specifically, tell him you'll be back to pick him up tomorrow. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you tell him. Now, yeah, technically I am telling you to lie, but they're fucking lying to you on the other end anyway. They're lying to you, telling you they can do this and they can do that and they're going to do this and they're going to do that when they know they have no intention of doing any of that. Be very, very careful at what people tell you when they call you on these signs. Just because somebody calls you and quotes you what they could find you doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they're going to find you. All right. There's a lot of times when we get phone calls here around the Phoenix area and people like to make up a number. They'll say, hey, I saw your signs. Your signs are illegal. Do you know that they can find you? $450 per sign. Sometimes they'll say 250. Sometimes they'll say 500. They'll just make up whatever number comes to their head. They can fine you X amount per sign, which technically they could. What they don't tell you though, is how many people actually get fined, which is slim and none in between. I mean, it's very, very rare for somebody to get fined when it comes to these signs. Uh, last video, I told you about a gold client who used his own personal number on his signs and he used his company number and that's how the city found him. The city found them and they send them a warning. They send them certified mail saying, hey, we know who you are. We know these are your signs. We're asking you to stop. The guy continued doing it. About two, three months later, they send them another letter saying, hey, buddy, we know who you are. We're going to ask you to stop. He continued to do it. They send them a third letter about two or three months after that. Said, hey, we already know who you are. Next time we tell you, we're going to find you. So he held off for maybe about a month or two, and then he decided to put some more signs out there. Guy from the city comes to his office and says, hey, we've already told you, we've already warned you, now I'm giving you a personal warning. Next time we come out, we're gonna give you a fine. That was four official warnings, four official warnings from the city, and this gentleman has still not got a fine. Now he finally decided to cut back and not do the signs anymore, and that's understandable, uh, but once again, all that stuff, all those warnings, all those official warnings where they knew who he were, where they knew where he was located, they still have not issued him any type of official fine where he had to come out with any money out of his pocket. So just because they can do that doesn't necessarily mean that they will do that. And that's one of the things that you have to learn, especially if you're very new with the bandit signs, especially if it's your first time placing them out. I know I have, I've talked to a lot of different people and I've talked to a lot of different folks and they'll say something along the lines of, oh, I placed bandit signs once and I got in trouble with the city. So my question is, really? Did you actually have to pay a fine? Did you go to court? Oh, no, 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 no. Some guy just called me and said they can fine us $250 per sign. That's not getting in trouble with the city. That's some guy calling you, claiming to be somebody that he's not most likely. Here, you wanna know how when somebody's from the city, you want to know the one thing that's gonna differentiate somebody that's bullshitting you from somebody who's actually from the city code enforcement or from the actual city itself. The people from the city are gonna be very short with you. They're not gonna to wanna to hear your business pitch. They're not gonna want, they don't give a shit what you're selling or what you're trying to do. They're gonna be very short and they're gonna tell you this, 
What's your name? Where are you located? You got a website, you got a phone number. Those are the very first things that are gonna come out of their mouth. They don't care what you do, they don't care your name, they don't care about any of that. They're actually gonna cut you as you're trying to talk to them. You're gonna, you're gonna say, you're gonna notice that when you ask them certain questions about your business, like if you're a real estate uh, investor and you say, hey, where did you, you know, were you interested in buying a house? Uh, where are you located at? What's your phone number? That's how you know that somebody's actually from the city. Because once again, they can't find you until they find you. And they, even then, they can't find you until they actually give you certified mail saying, we know who you are, and this is where it's at. Another thing that people, mis big misconception, is people believe that the police can give you tickets for these signs. The only ones that can issue any type of tickets, the only ones that can issue any type of fines for these would be the city code ordinance. The, the, the signs are not illegal per se. They are against city code violation. Okay, it's not illegal to be walking around with a sign and a cop sees you. It's not illegal for a cop to see you placing a sign. You're not doing anything wrong. It's against city code violation. So the only ones that can give you any type of fine would be the city code violation. Now, same thing though. You don't want to start harassing the cops and saying, fuck you, you can't give me a ticket, so I'm gonna place them anyway. If they tell you, hey, don't do it. If they tell you, hey, uh, you know, you can't do that, say, all right, and move on to the next corner. It's just that simple. Um, a few techniques that we have found to work here in regards to how to divert attention from yourself, how to divert any of those angry clients that we've talked about, how to divert anybody from the city calling you. Let's say that somebody from the city does call you. Let's say that it's an actual city code ordinance guy. Um, let, let's just say, let, let's just say you happen to have the luck of the draw and those are the people that call you. There's different techniques that you can use even at that point to avoid moving any type of confrontation. First and foremost, just let them know, hey, I'm, I'm just a worker. I just answer the phones. That, that's my job is I, I can take a message for you. I can have the boss call you back. I just answer the phones. If, if you want, you can even take it one step further. I've actually learned this from one of my clients. Use a rep ID number. So if somebody's calling you saying, hey, you know your signs and, and we're gonna give you fines, this and that, say, sir, I'm just answering the phones. You want my rep ID number? It's make number and then you make up a number, A, B, C, one, two, three. It doesn't really matter what number you make up. You're a rep at that point. You're not the person that they want to talk to. Um, apologize for your sign. Say, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know we could place them there. I didn't know it couldn't be done. I saw other signs around. I told my guy not to place them there. I hired a guy off Craigslist to place my signs. I have no idea where they ended up. I hired a marketing company to place them. I have no idea where they ended up. You guys get the idea. You, it, you guys are smart. You guys get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Just don't confront them. Don't, don't, don't make it, don't uh, add fuel to the fire. Do not add fuel to the fire. You definitely don't want to be that fuel to the fire. Once again, this is a three-part series uh, on our 10-part ten, ten overall series. This is a three-part series regarding how to avoid the sign police. The first part, we went over how to, um, the rules about placing signs and the rules on avoiding all this stuff. Uh, second video, we went over what to do before you place them. And then this last video, we went over what to do when you place them here. One thing that I do want to say and then I do want to make very clearly these particular techniques here, they work in regards to avoiding and deflecting and everything, but there's, there's not 100%, there's not one technique that 100% guarantees you that you won't receive any type of fine. That's all really gonna have to do with where you're at. Do your homework, uh, find out what areas are stricter than others. If you don't know, if you're new at this, call some of the other people in your town that are placing bandit signs. Doesn't matter what type of business they have and just ask them questions. Say, hey, how's it going? What, you know, what areas have you been, have you had good results? What areas have you had, uh, have you been harassed? Have you ever received any type of, uh, have you ever received any type of fine or anything along those lines? Uh, just to reiterate one last time on this third video, uh, we went over, be, we were over over eager clients. Be aware of people that are just very, very eager to buy your stuff. They wanna buy all your stuff without asking any type of questions. That's usually somebody from the city, usually some guy from the city ordinance trying to trap you or trying to trick you into giving them their information so they can send you some sort of certified mail asking you to stop. Uh, the second one here is um, use the worker technique. Be very uh, careful when people are calling you and telling you over the phone. Uh, people can say whatever they want. People can claim to be whoever they want on the phone. Let them fluff their feathers. Let, let them feel good. Make, make them feel like if they put you on your place, that's how you avoid any type of fines. Um, use the worker technique. When people call you and say, hey, blah, 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 I'm just a worker, I just answer the phones, here's my rep ID number, say whatever you want, I hired a guy, uh, whatever, whatever the case might be, just make sure that you're apologized, just make sure that you're nice. And then the last thing, and this pretty much goes over the whole thing, all three of these, I've said it, 
avoid any type of confrontation. Do whatever it is in your power to avoid confrontation. Be the bigger person. Let them make them feel like they're the ones that put you in their place. You don't have to sit there and tell them, and you don't have to sit there and, re and explain to them why it is that your signs are beneficial, why it is that your signs make tax, tax money that pays their city, or any of that stuff. You, you, don't, you don't have to go into that. Let them feel good, let them feel what they wanna do, and that way we can avoid. Because once again, guys, we're here to make money, not to lose money. My name is VP with Together We Grow. Till next time.